asked our principal, Dr. K. S. Anil Kumar, to deliver the presidential address. Good afternoon to everybody. And I am totally happy with uh, the third session of today's program. Virtuosa 2020 is a successful event of KSM DB College. The number of participants gradually increasing and uh, now more than 500. That is a great achievement of our institution. And their response and feedback. So we really satisfied and uh, we are actually enthusiastic for their immense support for the program. Actually, we are facing an unprecedented scenario that is the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic situation. In this situation, the teaching learning process and research activities are in a shutdown mode. So normally, a vibrant community. Our community is a vibrant community that is teaching community. We are immediately recover the scenario and uh, we use the platform of IT to disseminate the teaching learning process to the society. Ultimately what happened means the peoples, they are knowingly or unknowingly cope with this system. See, KSM DB College has started in 1964, one of the leading art science, science college of Kerala University. So I'm very happy to say that. See, this art science, science college, using the latest trends of technology, that is using this IT platform, our faculty members are very effectively coordinating the webinar series. So that is why most probably one of the leading seminar webinar of the state of Kerala itself. See, I have gone through some of the feedbacks of the participants. They really appreciated. And uh, one feedback I really encouraged more. That means we have to continue this webinar series in future also, their response. So today we have the third session. Yesterday and day before yesterday, we had two sessions by two eminent faculties and a well-known scientist of our country. The inaugural talk by Dr. Sabu Thomas, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University. Introduction to macromolecules, that means using the mask by using the polymer technology. The second one by Dr. Madhu S. Nair, very interesting talk for general indexing and cytometrics. Today is also Dr. A. Vijugumar, one of the well-known aquatic biologists of our state. I know him very well personally. He is one of my friends. When I was a member of the Academy Council, we usually met together. And he is one of the well-known academicians. And uh, with great pleasure, I once again, on the behalf of the institution, hearty welcome you, sir. And uh, Thank you. see the process is going on. And uh, all wishes for the uh, Virtusa. And uh, I think one more point I have to add that see, our IQAC coordinator, Dr. Jayashree, and the team sitting on this panel. So they are not IC, IT savvy people but they are very effectively patient taking people. They are very effectively coordinating this virtues to a success level. Thank you, thank you one and all. Thank you, sir. It will be totally unfair from our part if you don't acknowledge the motivation and support extended by our well-wishers. On behalf of IQSC, I use this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to all our well wishers. Let us see the felicitation video sent by Honorable Vice Chancellor of University of Kerala, Dr. V.P. Mahadevan Pillai. COVID-19 and the Mahamari Kedre Ulla Yutatilanalo Namanavi Logatula Age Idinotagam 
മൂന്ന് ലക്ഷത്തോളം വിലപ്പെട്ട ജീവനുകൾ നമുക്ക് നഷ്ടമായി അച്ചടക്കത്തോടെയും ഒരുമയോടെയും നാം എല്ലാവരും നീങ്ങിയതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഒരു പരിധിവരെയെങ്കിലും ഈ ദുരന്തത്തെ പ്രതിരോധിക്കാൻ കേരളത്തിന് ആയത് ശാസ്ത്രബോധമുള്ള ഒരു ജനതയെ സൃഷ്ടിക്കുക എന്നതാണ് രാഷ്ട്രവികസനത്തിന് ആവശ്യം അത്തരം ഒരു സമൂഹത്തെ വാർത്തെടുക്കുക എന്നതാണ് നമ്മുടെ കർത്തവ്യം വിദ്യാർത്ഥികളിൽ ക്രിട്ടിക്കൽ തിങ്കിങ് ഉണ്ടാവണം ക്രിട്ടിക്കൽ തിങ്കിങ് ക്രമേണ ക്രിയേറ്റീവ് തിങ്കിങ്ങിലേക്കും അതുവഴി ഇന്നവേഷൻസിലേക്കും കണ്ടുപിടുത്തങ്ങളിലേക്കും നയിക്കും ഇന്നത്തെ കോവിഡ് പത്തൊമ്പതിൻ്റെ വിപരീത സാഹചര്യങ്ങളെ പരിഗണിച്ച് ആധുനിക വിദ്യകളെ കൈപിടിച്ച് വിദ്യാർത്ഥികളിൽ ശാസ്ത്രബോധം ഉണർത്താൻ ഉള്ള ശ്രമം നടത്തുക എന്നതാണ് ആവശ്യം ഈ ലക്ഷ്യത്തെ മുൻനിർത്തി ശാസ്താംകോട്ട ദേവസ്വം ബോർഡ് കോളേജ് വിവിധ വിഷയങ്ങളിൽ പ്രഗത്ഭരുടെ പ്രഭാഷണങ്ങളെ ക്രോഡീകരിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് വെർച്വോസ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ട്വൻ്റി എന്ന വെബിനാർ പരമ്പര തുടങ്ങിയാണ് ഇതിൻ്റെ പ്രയോജനം അധ്യാപകർക്കും വിദ്യാർത്ഥികൾക്കും സാധാരണ ജനങ്ങൾക്കും ലഭിക്കുമെന്നും വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നു ഇത്തരം ഒരു നല്ല ഉദ്യമത്തിന് ഇടിഞ്ഞ കോളേജ് പ്രിൻസിപ്പൽ ഡോക്ടർ അനിൽകുമാറിനെയും മറ്റ് അധ്യാപകരെയും പ്രത്യേകം ശ്ലാഘിക്കുന്നു ഈ വെബിനാർ പരമ്പരയ്ക്ക് എല്ലാ അഭിനന്ദനങ്ങളും ആശംസകളും നേരിടും KSM 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 DB DB College is is managed by Travanko Devasam Board and the the support of the management is a key motivational factor behind Virtuosa 2020. Let's hear the words of Sri KS DB, Honorable Member Travanko Devasam Board. കേരളത്തെ അറിയപ്പെടുന്ന പ്രമുഖരെ ഉൾപ്പെടുത്തി ശാസ്താംകോട്ട കുമ്പളത്ത് ചുമപ്പുള്ള മെമ്മോറിയൽ കോളേജിൻ്റെ ആഭിമുഖ്യത്തിൽ വെബ് സെമിനാർ നടത്തുന്നതായി അതിന് വളരെ സന്തോഷം ശാസ്ത്ര സാങ്കേതിക രംഗങ്ങളിൽ നമ്മൾ കൈവരിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള നേട്ടങ്ങൾ പരമാവധി ഉപയോഗിച്ചതിൻ്റെ ദൃഷ്ടാന്തങ്ങളാണ് കഴിഞ്ഞ ദിവസം നമ്മൾ ഈ കോവിഡിനെയും മറ്റും അതിജീവിച്ച പശ്ചാത്തലത്തിൽ നാം കാണുന്നത് വളരെ പ്രയോജനകരമായി ഉള്ള നിർദ്ദേശങ്ങൾ ചർച്ചകൾ എല്ലാം ഈ സെമിനാറിൽ ഉയർന്നു വരും അങ്ങനെ ഉയർന്നു വരട്ടെ എന്ന് ആശംസിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ നോക്കുന്നു ട്രൂ ടീച്ചർ ആർ ദോസ് ഹോ ഹെൽപ്പ് അസ് തിങ്ക് ഫോർ അവർ സെൽഫ് ടോൾഡ് ബൈ ദ ബെസ്റ്റ് ടീച്ചർ വി ഹാവ് ഇൻ അവർ നേഷൻ വി ഹാവ് ഇൻ അവർ നേഷൻ ദ വേൾഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ഡോക്ടർ എസ് രാധാകൃഷ്ണൻ KSM DB College is blessed with a highly reputed faculty resource who wholeheartedly supported Virtuosa 2020. Now let me invite Professor Shanga Narayan sir, senior faculty member of English department to share a few words. Good afternoon everyone. We are amid an extraordinary situation emerging out of the global pandemic and the consequent lockdown the entire higher education system has been badly disturbed there comes the clarion call virtuoso 2020 a webinar series from iqac ksm db college shastangotta physical has turned into virtual these days or one can say virtual is the new physical today so i take this opportunity to congratulate our principal dr k s anil kumar who has been the guiding spirit behind this novel venture 
and also Dr. Jayashree, the IQ AC coordinator, and all other intellectuals who work hard to make this endeavor a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now it is time to start the technical session. And I consider my privilege to introduce Dr. A. Vijigumar, the resource person for today's session. Dr. A. Vijigumar is a professor and head of the Department of Aquatic Biology and Fisheries, University of Kerala. He is also a member of International Sioux Educators Association, IEZE, which is a South Asia regional network. Dr. A. Vijigumar is also the founder member of Center for Innovation in Science and Social Action. He also serves as program member of Friends of Marine Life. He is also Animal Welfare Officer of Animal Welfare Board of India. Dr. Vijigumar is now serving as member of Environment Research and Development Committee of Directorate of Environment and Climate Change, Government of Kerala. Dr. Vijigumar will be handling a section on environment and development, a post-COVID perspective, which all of us believe will be the norm of development in the coming years. Now I request Dr. A. Vijigumar to take over the session. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. Uh, at the outset, let me thank uh, the Devasam Board uh, College uh, Principal as well as uh, Dr. Anil Kumar, Dr. Jayashree and the whole team uh, behind uh, this event. And I consider it as an opportunity uh, to uh, share my thoughts with you, especially we are going through an unprecedented scenario uh, in the whole history of Earth where half of the globe is uh, locked down. Uh, in various parts of the world. And the topic which I'm going to talk is environment and development, a perspective in post-COVID era. Uh, my talk uh, will have uh, four components. Uh, even though I am basically a biology teacher, uh, I may touch upon uh, different aspects, including the biology, the development, the economics, and the environment in general. And uh, these are this is the outline of my talk. I talk start talking with uh, the human spread in the universe, how the human species actually spread in the uh, planet. And the part two of my talk will be on the man-made changes and developments in the last 50 years, especially the development of science and technology and uh, the human uh, dominance in the planet. And in the third part, I will be talking on the status of the environment, what is the current status of the environment, including uh, the uh, uh, the current uh, status of biodiversity and uh, different aspects of environmental scenario. And uh, to conclude, I'll just discuss about how we can move forward, especially in a, uh, when we have seen all the issues with the neoliberal developmental scenario across the world and how as a community, as a human community, we can move forward. Now, when we start discussing about the environmental impact, we should all understand that the whole, uh, the, the whole plant, the universe began from a single atom and uh, all, all began with a big bang, almost 13.78 million billion years ago. And when we look at the uh, position of uh, Earth in our universe, you see it in this uh, figure, uh, it's actually part of a small uh, universe. Uh, where the uh, life uh, began almost 4.54 billion years ago. And uh, the, when they, we saw the beginning of Earth almost 4.5 billion years ago, the first living molecule appeared on the primitive oceans, probably, uh, around 3.7 billion years ago. And the first human beings started walking on the surface of the Earth, probably 500,000 years ago. That means we are very young 
when we consider the age of our earth and the universe and when you all know we all uh, learned that human species uh, we have uh, a, a different origin and our origin uh, we can the closest relative may be the chimpanzee and then all the new genetic evidences including the mitochondrial dna studies uh, which clearly shows that we have as a as a group we started separate separating from the uh, our close relatives the common ancestor uh, our common ancestor will be chimpanzees and uh, bonobos it happened almost 6 million years ago and then we start when when we see and discuss about the origin of uh, the human species there are different uh, uh, theories but every at present the scientists have a general agreement that uh, the journey the origin of the human homo sapiens the human beings started in africa and uh, earlier uh, we believed that uh, you know the it started uh, the, the ancient uh, human fossil was available from ethiopia and now uh, we have a new uh, fossil available uh, from a grave the rift valley of east africa which clearly shows that human beings uh, actually started walking on this planet almost uh, 600000 years ago and when we see the origin in the africa it's very interesting to see how the human beings spread across the planet across the continents and now uh, the science makes it very clear with the help of the molecular studies uh, there's a larger project called human genome project which tried to analyze the dna content especially the mitochondrial dna content of all the primitive tribes across the world and this clearly shows the human beings as you can see here uh, they started their uh, uh, they originated as a uh, as two stocks in africa Uh, and then they started their migration in different uh, planes across the world and at that period of time it was not human beings alone we have our close ancestors as well so they started a, a different uh, 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 routes across the world and they started their journey from africa okay and now the things are very clear that the hypothesis is called the out of africa hypothesis and clearly shows that all the human beings began in africa and then uh, you know uh, walked into different parts of the world and what actually triggered uh, this kind of a movement of population out of africa and there are different uh, theories and the prominent theory says that it was uh, the the ice age which uh, uh, initiated this kind of a movement and uh, now the accepted theory is called a sahara pump theory and it's uh, suggest that the human uh, uh, genus called homo they have migrated of out of africa at least 3 and possibly 4 times and uh, recent evidence suggests that these dispersals are closely related with fluctuating periods of climate change and uh, there are two different arguments and one believe that it is a very strong uh, wind ice age which promoted the people from moving out of africa and there is also a, a theory which says that uh, there is severe drought in the in many part of africa uh, and that also driven other people out of africa anyway remember at present in 21st century the major issue facing mankind is climate change and actually it is a climate change that has driv that driven the human species from africa uh, to different parts of the world as you can see in this uh, uh, map and this map also tells you a uh, different uh, uh, scenarios and stories and you can see that when the human beings originated uh, from africa as you can see here and they have undertaken different uh, uh, routes in uh, to different parts of the world we can see the first group moving uh, towards the a northern pole and then another group actually starting their journey and almost 7000 700000 years ago they migrated to india and then from india they went back to uh, some part of europe and you can see that another part another the human beings then again migrated to different parts uh, some uh, migrated uh, to uh, australia and nearby islands and you can see that some of the other groups actually uh, took a very very long journey and this was a very the hardest journey uh, in the human history and they went uh, and this was this happened primarily again because of climate change when the sea between uh, these uh, uh, continents subsided uh, because of uh, the uh, residence of the sea and movement of the uh, planets then you can see that there is a final group of people they finally uh, reached the northern part of uh, america and uh, uh, they reached the american continent so all these things says that the human uh, beings they have their origin in africa and then they have a uh, migration to different uh, parts of the world 
then the normal question before we discuss about the environmental issue is that why even though we have different other human species in the planet why the homo sapiens became the most dominant uh, animal in the world or the human beings in the world and the issue is uh, very sim- uh, a complex but there is a general consensus that you know, the human beings the homo sapiens they have better brains as you can see from the scientific name of uh, human beings we are called homo sapiens homo means human sapiens means wise so we are more wiser uh, than uh, the the uh, rest of the uh, human species which actually uh, made us uh, different from other human beings and there are uh, when we discuss about the the development one thing we should remember is that science is uh, behind explaining many of the facts and there should be a reason why the hum- homo sapiens should be uh, much uh, brainy uh, than uh, the other species the reason is very simple the day when which uh, the human uh, being started eating uh, meat uh, then that is actually the triggering point and uh, the brain uh, trophic element in the the main uh, uh, element in the meat is vitamin b3 or nicotinamide and the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide consumer pathway is now very best established in the human beings and that actually triggered the human brain development uh, compared to the other uh, uh, human uh, species which prevailed uh, in that uh, time of history so that that means that kind of a diet actually triggered the brain development and that is the reason why the human uh, beings became more uh, brainy uh, than the rest of the species and that is one of the reason why we are dominating uh, the world and uh, during the process of evolution we have seen different uh, changes in the human species as you can see in the, uh, the the photograph given here when we started the whole changes actually started uh, when we uh, began our journey as a bipedal animal when we started moving with the two legs straight up and then we started losing the hair from the body and then we became the the so called modern man so all these things happened in the last 500000 years uh, time so that means you know there are changes happening even now and also and another reason is that you know the uh, human body uh, we can see that when uh, the the when we lost the hair and we have it is primarily because of uh, more uh, exposure to a light the entire body part uh, surface is exposed to uh, sunlight and then uh, naturally there will be more uh, sweat glands and then the hair uh, disappeared gradually uh, from the body and also when you look at the you know the whole history of uh, the human uh, beings and uh, uh, their classification into different caste creed etc we would understand should uh, we should understand that you know the emergence of skin pigmentation um, this is also very different when the african people they migrated out of africa and then naturally when they uh, entered into different parts of the world where they got lesser amount of sunlight and then uh, as the human beings began to migrate the evolutionary constraint keeping the skin dark decreased proportionately in the northern populations and some of them experienced positive selections that means the people who were actually white in color or lesser body color uh, or lesser body pigmentation they have the genetic advantage in that area they got natural selection and the people in the northern hemisphere they became uh, white in color and then they migrated to different parts of the world that is the reason why we have white people we have the the, uh, the dark skinned people especially in the tropics and then we have a mixture of uh, different uh, or the gradation uh, especially in india we have the brown people so you can see that we all started as a single stock and when we migrated to different parts of the world uh, our color also uh, changed and then uh, those who are re- really interested in uh, you know why the human beings actually dominate the earth there is a very interesting book by yuval noah harari it's called the sapiens this is one of the best sellers in uh, the world now and he actually recognized uh, three kind of revolutions especially when we discuss about human evolution and their migration to different parts of the world or earth and the first he considered as the cognitive evolution and uh, which happened almost 70000 years ago and when we became more brainy and when we decide when we started you know discovering tools and then all the discoveries came after that and then 10000 years ago we saw the agricultural revolution when the migrating people they started settling on some part of the world and then uh, we started agriculture it happened 10000 years ago 
and the whole science and technology development uh, which we saw which we are witnessing now happened in the last 500 years time so these are the three kinds of evolution when we look at the human uh, history okay and what actually these revolutions gave the human beings and these revolutions have uh, gave humans the advantage which is to create and connect around the ideas okay so when we started moving across the world we actually have uh, we our own imagination our own creations and then we thought about the religion we thought about capitalism we thought about politics and all these things were not at all there uh, when the human beings originated and then they started migrating or in the ancient uh, time of uh, uh, our uh, life and then another advantage compared to the other uh, species in the world uh, you know is that we have a unique ability to socialize and collaborate okay for example you have social animals for example if you look at an ant colony a bee colony then you will see that there are uh, uh, definitely a kind of co socialization and collaboration but this is not applied to this is applied only to a limited uh, number of organisms you look at chimpanzees our closest relatives they also cooperate but their troop uh, may have a limited number but you can see that we are living in the world of uh, you know the corona the covid virus and uh, covid virus now spreads across the world in less than a uh, few months so that is primarily because the human beings migrate the human beings travel across the world we collaborate in a larger system in science in education we collaborate so this is something which is very very different as far as homo sapiens are concerned we collaborate in large numbers we create ideas and we create uh, you know the equipments we create a, a lot of uh, things uh, which we consider as important in our progress okay so this uh, primarily separate human beings uh, from others and also if you look at the whole way in which the religion uh, you know the uh, originated in different parts of the world the same thing happened because you know there are very interesting studies across the world and uh, because we started believing in uh, certain natural forces and slowly we uh, started shifting to uh, different philosophies ideas etc and uh, then uh, we we live in a uh, physical reality and imagine reality physical reality is that we are there you know you, i am here uh, talking to you and you are listening to me from different parts of india and that is actually the physical reality and we live in imagine reality because i believe that i am a hindu you somebody else believe that he is actually christian and these are all our our, our imagination and our thinking it doesn't have it has nothing to do with our existence okay and also uh, the main problem before we start discussing about the, the environmental issues is that we have very little knowledge uh, on our own history because we never try to understand who we are and uh, what actually we are doing to the planet and what uh, is the role of uh, the human species uh, in in the planet earth and that is uh, one thing which is happening and our lack of knowledge about the prehistoric religions and our belief is one of the biggest holes in our understanding of our human history that ha that should not actually happen even if you are studying science you should have a, a background knowledge on history otherwise you cannot actually survive as a human uh, species and you know if you look at uh, the scientific literature science and nature are considered as one of the top most uh, uh, journals and uh, you know this 2015 issue of uh, science carry a very interesting story and this is not done by the biologists but this is done by a group of people uh, with multidisciplinary and they brought out an argument how the society is actually grouped together and they created their own gods and then they started uh, believing different religions etc and this is i'm not going into the details because this is not the purpose of my uh, lecture so this is how you know the, the when the gods of small scale societies were initially nature and spirits then uh, they started uh, giving offerings and then the when the human population became larger and there became uh, the some of the some of them became the leaders and in order to make the others uh, follow him he started uh, you know uh, the worshiping and he became the master of the ceremony and uh, very very interestingly you know the uh, somebody started controlling the human society and that is how you know the different kinds of societies uh, they became controlled by certain beliefs and uh, this is again another uh, uh, interesting article which appeared in nature in 2019 and uh, it clearly shows how the complex societies proceed moralizing gods throughout the world history And, and this is also a very interesting study, which probably you can uh, uh, read 
uh, the global distribution and timing of beliefs in moralizing gods it shows that big gods appear in big societies and everything you remember human beings uh, you know started their migration i told you as homo sapiens almost 600000 years ago and every other kind of beliefs as you can see from the graph it started in last 3000 years only okay our beliefs on our uh, creations and so that doesn't mean that uh, we should actually uh, become an atheist and uh, we should not believe anything in religion etc it nothing to do with that uh, but only thing is that uh, we should remember as swami vivekananda said the biggest guide in life is strength in religion as in all other matters discard everything that is that we can see uh, you have nothing to do with it okay and that is the same philosophy of aham brahmasmi i am the absolute you know that is you know once you started believing that you know you are the thing uh, to control uh, many other other things which is happening within you as well as within the universe and then the universe will start uh, changing and that is uh, the same essence of uh, what I, albert einstein also said a uh, science uh, without religion is lame a religion without science is blind so we need to have uh, a larger thinking about that thomas huxley also said science is simply common sense at the best at its best so whatever uh, uh, you have actually to think uh, post covid era or the life in the planet after a long period of time uh, we should have a stronger science orientation in uh, doing the things rather than very very narrow political or other kind of religious uh, thinking and that is uh, the reason why this kind of uh, 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 science in progress human progress is very very important and uh, if you look at the whole uh, history of the indian population and we believe uh, that in in the whole uh, history of uh, or philosophy of vasudeva kudumbakam which consider the world as a single family and indians as science says uh, should have uh, you know the that kind of a uh, belief primarily because we actually are the people who came from different parts of uh, the world one uh, part of the indian population uh, according to the recent uh, scientific evidences uh, we came from iran some part of uh, the indian uh, 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 population came from the the russia which is now part of kazakhstan and some part of course uh, the earlier uh, people with uh, the african origin so we are a mixture of people and when we settled along uh, the indo gangetic plains and started uh, our, our own uh, culture and then it became very interesting uh, to showcase to the world because we are uh, different but at the same time uh, we believe in a single uh, india that is something very unique because we have such a kind of uh, origin as far as human uh, species are concerned okay and then when uh, we started uh, making weaponry we started designing the tools and then that is the time on uh, which uh, from which uh, we actually started uh, managing the environment and other animals around you so that is uh, the second part of my lecture how we started uh, influencing the nature and the natural forces okay and then why the human species are also different from or special when you compared with other animals in the planet okay and one is that uh, we are the only uh, being in the planet which actually do the business okay because now you can see that the entire world is driven the economy is driven by trade and uh, you know the globe uh, in, in a globalized world okay and also this is a only uh, species in the planet where there is a social hierarchy and inequality and uh, this all all these things are our own creations because you know if you look at the whole way in which uh, you know the, the people are classified for example if you go to america we have a very strong history of uh, uh, racism when you uh, look at india we have a, even though it happened only in the last 3, 3000 years we have again a strong system of caste and all are our own creation and no other species has this kind of a, an inequality and the social hierarchy uh, which spread across uh, the population and also uh, we have uh, right from the beginning we started making somebody as a king and somebody as rich and uh, somebody as a ruler okay and uh, this this discrimination it became worse time after time and uh, you know more than 90% of the money uh, which we believe as money in the world is nothing but electronic data uh, because it's not physical money it exists as bitcoin or something else in some part of the world and then we still believe that uh, the problem is depreciation money etc 
this is again another kind of philosophy anyway so uh, we uh, if you in human species uh, we got more time after as human species after we started ag- agriculture and uh, the day we started agriculture we started managing the ecosystem we started managing the uh, environment and that is uh, very clear because uh, after settling uh, because earlier our only intention is actually to search for food and uh, gathering food material and uh, we spend almost all the time in searching for the food material and then uh, when we started agriculture we got more time so we got more time to think about uh, different things and we think uh, we started think about uh, thinking about uh, you know modernizing uh, the way in which we look at life and also think about uh, how pleasure can uh, come to your life and all the things uh, uh, happen uh, and also uh, we became uh, unipolar because whoever uh, human being is in different parts of the world we all think like alike okay so the from uh, multiculturalism or plural uh, we have a doubt whether we are multiculturalism or we have the plural uh, mono uh, culturalism because if you look at india see the the people we think that we have a long history and we have a strong uh, culture and at the same time uh, in the television we watch uh, the uh, euro open championship we sometimes watch the the uh, car racing in some part of uh, america and we start eating pizza and burger and then uh, we are actually part of the global society so that is why we are all controlled by the global market and uh, we have a single uh, planet and we share everything and that is the reason why the amartya sen uh, speaks about uh, plural uh, monoculturalism the doctrine that individuals ought to remain faithful uh, to uh, their own ancestral culture and that a good society ought to be uh, silent bound where diverse groups maintain and per, uh, and the persistence of ethnic communities uh, should be encouraged okay so uh, we have a pure culture or not but india definitely has a multiple uh, group communities coming into this land and that is the reason why we will see lot of variations in the cultural diversity in the in, in the ethnic diversity in the food diversity you can examine so all these things are not Uh, coming from india it is actually a mixture which we got when the different uh, uh, communities migrated uh, into uh, india and also another thing which is again unique to human uh, beings is that uh, just like the Egypt- egyptians we started bu- uh, building uh, larger monuments okay even now we started uh, doing the same thing we are making the largest statue in the world uh, with uh, no reason at all and no benefit to at all but this is the way in which the human beings believe we will become immortal so these are some of the very unique uh, things about the human beings okay now we come to the second part of uh, uh, the lecture if you look at the whole uh, human history some of the things which actually strongly influence the human society and we would say we are now living in the in, in the covid era and uh, you should understand that in the human uh, past human beings uh, as a population as a community we went through a series of uh, disasters and the first disaster was famine and second was plague and third war and we'll discuss one by one what uh, are the major hardships uh, challenges uh, greatest challenges faced by the human society in the last 100000 sorry 10000 years okay and what is actually the reason for famine and if you look at the bengal famine which happened in 1943 an estimated 2.1 to 3 million people out of the population of 60.3 million died of starvation malaria or as a, or other diseases connected with that all aggravated by malnutrition and the people started migrating and there was population displacement a lot of unsanitary conditions and very and all these things affected the health of the people and then uh, they died in large numbers and now it was believed that it is actually the poverty it was actually the uh, the famine which actually killed the uh, indians at that period of time now the latest uh, study based on uh, the computer uh, gra- uh, modeling Uh, in uh, taking into all the climatic data it clearly says that there was no uh, scenario no see the weather issue in 1943 but why this bengal famine happened it is primarily because of the political policies of the british who ruled us especially the prime minister the then prime minister churchill 
And what he did is that he actually stopped uh, the supply of grains to the Indians and uh, then started uh, pumping all the resources to England during the wartime and uh, created the serious famine. And also he uh, denied uh, the food which is actually farm, created by the farmer themselves and then uh, never allowed the, uh, the vehicles to come into, the bung, into Bengal. And that actually created the political decision at that period of time, the export of our own uh, resources to uh, England and denying us the resources which we produce created uh, the famine. So some way or other, some uh, uh, similar things are happening even now, but in some other forms, which we'll discuss later. Okay. And now we are discussing about uh, COVID, co the novel uh, Corona virus. And, but you should remember that uh, the la largest pandemic in the world was plague. And it's called the Black Death. It is estimated to have killed 30 to 60 percentage of the European population. And 200 million people lost their lives because of uh, the viral attack. And then if you look at uh, the current scenario, we have no plaque, very serious issue of plaque now. And there is no serious issue of uh, uh, famine now, particularly in, uh, in India. And uh, the reason is that it was science and our knowledge in natural history and biodiversity that helped to overcome famine. When we started very seriously, scientifically doing agricultural practices, utilizing the wild relatives of crops in a systematic manner, uh, we could actually avoid uh, uh, this kind of a famine. We have surplus uh, grain production now in India. We also export now. So this is primarily because our own scientists, they work for it and they have a design for that. And think about the uh, control of uh, plaque, then we understand that it is the development of vaccines and uh, better disease diagnosis that helped uh, in the human society to succumb uh, uh, to uh, diseases. And uh, then third issue, war. Now, we actually create an illusion of war. You know, after the Second World War, we never saw a kind of very serious uh, war. At the same time, you remember uh, the entire the global business, global trade, happens primarily with the, the uh, export of arms. For example, if you look at the death which is happening due to war in nations, it reduced to almost zero per uh, 100,000 people in the, in the 21st century. That means the amount, of the amount of human mortalities as a result of war is almost negligible in the present time. But there are so many reasons for that. Uh, uh, the reduction in the war. And one is that many people have nuclear weapons. And that means uh, the, the, the opponents are rather afraid uh, to say this kind of a scenario. And second is that, you know, uh, now everybody does business. Okay. So the world is run by business and, uh, you know, the, the countries, the top most countries who actually produce uh, weapons, they know that creating war is not a good business. At the same time, uh, you know, creating a war-like scenario, a mindset is the more important aspect. But if you have a very serious war, you cannot do any kind of business. But at the same time, if you transfer data, you'll get more money than what happens with the war. So trade is much better uh, than actually conquest. There's no meaning in conquesting a country and getting the resources. That is not actually a wise decision now. But you can do a trade with them and then you can get more, more money. And these are the reasons why, you know, there's no uh, much uh, war happening. Uh, and the terrorism, we, we still believe that uh, the, the, the Muslim uh, terrorists are the greatest uh, threat to the uh, uh, world's existence or uh, some other fraction of the society is more terror. It is not like that because very little number of people are actually killed by the terrorists in the, in the recent times. Still, uh, at the same time, we look at uh, the people killed every year. For example, uh, since 11, um, uh, September 11, 2011, uh, you know, the, the number of people killed in European Union uh, per year will be 50 by the terrorists. And in USA, it is only 10 and uh, the, the, to 25,000 globally. So what is actually we should understand when you think about development, when we think about the future of the universe, we should understand that there are serious issues to discuss. For example, diabetes. Diabetes and high sugar levels kill almost 3.5 million people annually. I say, uh, similarly, air pollution, 
kills about 7 million people uh, all the day. But, you know, the, our political system always discuss about war, terrorists, threat, all the nuclear weapons, etc. But and there are serious issues for human beings to address. We have diabetes death. We have a large number of uh, people uh, dying every year as a result of uh, pollution, malnutrition, etc. So, the, in, in a different world, in a post-COVID world, definitely we have to think about uh, the development and what are the serious threats actually facing human beings. Okay. And then there are interesting, other interesting stories also. For example, number of suicides are more than the death caused by war and crime together. And for example, if you look at India, every year the number of uh, suicides, particularly by the farmers, are on, are on increase. So we, shall, we have to actually trace out the reason for that and try to plug it up in the long run. And then almost 800,000 people die due to suicide every year, which means one person in every 40 seconds. Okay. And India has the highest suicide rate in Southeast Asia as per the records of WHO. And then we consider even in the, in the lockdown period, we have reports that there are leopards coming into the human settlements, tiger coming into human settlements. We consider uh, tiger, lion and leopard are, uh, as our enemies. But our enemy are not these animals, but our largest enemy is a small animal called the mosquito. Okay, because uh, the death by mosquito bite is 8.3 million per year. At the same time, lion kill only 100 human beings per year. So again, uh, understanding the realities is very important when we, disc when we manage the environment. And we started discussing about the uh, global arm export. It's a thriving industry. We, we create a you know, war-like scenario and create a, uh, an, a, a feeling uh, that terrorism is a major issue. So we have, uh, should have more arm uh, trade happening. And you can see that the largest exporter, even after the Cold War period, is the USA and Russia. And followed by uh, France, which is only 7% compared to 33% by USA and 21% by Russia. Okay. And even though there was no war happening in the world, major weapon sale in the five years, last five years, is 10% higher than the earlier period. And also, you should understand where the, uh, who are all the buyers. Okay. And the Americans exported maximum number of uh, arms uh, to Saudi or the Gulf countries. Okay. And if you look at India, in terms of money, the largest importer is actually, one of the largest importer of arms is India. And you also have to, again, it's all depend upon the priorities. And uh, this is again a, a, a bubble diagram, which actually uh, tells you the story. Uh, we spend more money. We spend more money in paying the interest, including the, you know, the loan which we take from the World Bank. And we spend a lot of money for subsidy. And the next one comes to defense. At the same time, there are some uh, sectors which actually the government should actually invest more. Education, agriculture, social development, where the investment is comparatively less. And look at the health sector, which is uh, there at the bottom. Uh, uh, definitely in the post covid era, our attention to this sector is going to increase uh, because uh, unless and until you invest in the social service sector, uh, this is of no use uh, for the common man in the country. So that is, if you look, if you analyze the budget allocation uh, for all these social service sector, uh, we service the, uh, the different sector and uh, other uh, sectors, you will understand that we need actually uh, more allocation uh, to important sectors like education, uh, research, as well as uh, the healthcare and social services. Okay. And uh, also the way in which we consume. If you look at, if you draw a line here, uh, there are uh, huge differences. And if you draw a line here, you understand that there are countries in the north and which consume most part of the resources in the world. But at the same time, there are poor countries in the south uh, which consume lesser resources, but we produce more because our biodiversity and natural resources are more in the south, but it is exported towards the north and they feed more, they consume more and also pollute the world more. So there is gr growing inequality between the North and the South countries. And next part of my lecture, 
we discussed about the human origin migration and why the human beings dominate and uh, what is our uh, perceptions what are our perceptions about development and our priorities it is different when we look at the what would be the scenario in the next 2000 years again the things are changing there are interesting uh, publications and uh, you can read uh, very, uh, the publications of uh, stephen hawking who is one of the inspiring uh, scientists and then you can uh, if you are more philosophical you go and read the um, uh, very interesting publications of jiddu krishnamurthy who speaks uh, about the future of humanity and i would always uh, recommend you uh, reading the book 21 lessons for the 21st century by uh, yuval noah harari uh, what would be the future of uh, the human beings i start with uh, stephen hawking and uh, he's again a physicist uh, with a lot of uh, uh, who inspired youngsters in uh, different parts of the world and uh, he considered uh, that genetic engineering may inevitably alter the trajectory of human evolution because you know when you look at the human uh, history uh, or evolution of any other species you start with uh, uh, charles darwin the natural selection the survival of the fittest but the problem is that we are with the development of science and technology, we are intervening in human evolution. We are actually making the people disease free and we are trying to make the uh, human beings actually resistant to uh, many diseases. And also we are now trying to increase our lifespan uh, by using uh, technologies. So all these things you understand that genetic engineering uh, play a very, very important role and the synthetic biology play a very very important role in future uh, you know including designing of organs and creation of organs etc and then that means uh, we are actually intervening uh, in the natural process of evolution and then definitely uh, creating more and more intelligent people and uh, according to uh, stephen hawking in the in, in the nearby future we will uh, create the superhuman beings and he consider other threats uh, which uh, the, the humanity will face in the immediate future uh, as global warming and artificial intelligence. Okay. And uh, he also said that sometimes, you know, when the situations become very bad, we will find out another planet and migrate to uh, that planet and uh, prevent the human extinction. Okay. All these things sound very strange at present and this is science fiction, but uh, Considering the way in which the progress is happening, especially in the last 50 years time, particularly information technology and biotechnology, all these things will become a reality in the very uh, immediate future. And uh, next technology, see if you look at the whole way in which science progressed, the two technologies which changed the whole world in the last uh, uh, 50 years, I consider one as information technology, which changed everything. That's the reason why we have the webinar now. And second is uh, the biotechnological revolution because we know who we are. Uh, I know why I have an anger, why I have a bald head because I have some inherited some genes from my father or uh, the, the uh, ancestors. And similarly, we know each and every character which actually drive uh, the human beings and we know the genetic history of everything. And if we know the genetic history of our own, then we, we, it's very possible with the help of all the algorithms available, all the technologies available, we can go for bioengineering and we can create some kind of post-humans. Or this is called the immortal cyborgs, uh, which who can live forever. It, does that sound, uh, you know, something uh, interesting or something uh, which is not possible? But if you look at the, the way in which the science is progressing, everything is possible. At present, with the, with the available technology, you are in a position to create any animal within the lab. Now, only because of the, uh, the laws and regulations, uh, ethical, uh, framed based on ethical uh, regulations, we, the human beings or the scientists are not attempting that. So this is possible in, in the human world because uh, designer babies. For example, China last year produced uh, Lulu and Nana. Uh, they are the designer babies, uh, primarily created by, uh, you know, they did it primarily to uh, produce uh, children without the genetic or heritable diseases uh, because they control the mutation, gene mutations and uh, uh, produced a, a baby. And with the help, with the development of mitochondrial DNA transfer and uh, genome editing tools, it is always possible to create a child with the desired qualities which you like. And this is also possible because science has grown to that much of uh, extent now. 
Okay, so in in future uh, we may uh, have uh, uh, different uh, stories to tell, particularly uh, in the next uh, few decades. The dominating uh, forces uh, definitely uh, will be the uh, the technology, particularly the artificial intelligence. So, artificial intelligence, uh, you are actually making a a, a system, a computer system, uh, uh, with the help of an algorithms, you are creating intelligence to the machines. and uh, you are trying to uh, mimic uh, human uh, intelligence okay so this is uh, something different from machine learning it's one, it is one of them and the deep learning is one of those machine learning uh, techniques so with this help of artificial intelligence uh, or creating just like the human uh, neuron uh, network you can create a human beings which is uh, as good as or better than a human uh, species so this is uh, possible so artificial intelligence is going to rule the world in the uh, next uh, uh, a uh, few decades okay and uh, definitely in almost all the areas the artificial intelligence uh, will come to play and many of the uh, jobs which is done by the human beings now are going to be done by the machines and the machines is are going to uh, rule the world in next 50 years time because already it is happening for example amazon now in now uh, largest uh, you know ne- the trading network now uh, many of the work uh, like sorting and packing are done by human beings and they are now slowly replaced by the uh, machines and uh, definitely many people will become jobless and also the technology is changing so fast that uh, you know we are we don't know what will happen tomorrow if i learn something in my uh, in college or university and that will become obsolete when you go out because technology is changing very fast so the students the teachers should be more smarter uh, for tomorrow uh, primarily because uh, the things are changing and we will be in a confused uh, mode Uh, the students will be in a totally confused mood what to what to learn because we all the all the students come to our colleges our system mainly primarily to learn and if they move out and they are not getting a job and then it it's again uh, impossible for them to survive as well so and also uh, we are losing uh, our own space for example if i am talking to you through uh, zoom platform and uh, i am registering a my data is shared when i am using a facebook my data is shared and also you know the every trade in the world is actually managed by your uh, you as a consumer for example if you go to my facebook and if you go to my amazon account you will understand that what is my preferences and if you have the whole uh, data from throughout the world you will understand what is the preference of the uh, people in different part of the world you can make a product like that so it's a better business it's a mil- billion dollar uh, uh, million dollar business uh, as far as data is concerned that is the reason why big data analysis is again uh, going to be the rule of uh, tomorrow and uh, where you may lose your personal space because uh, what you are is better known to the computer than you so this is again the scenario when these are the scenarios for the future which i am uh, explaining to you and not in details and also uh, the problem at present is that we never live as a community because in an art, in a ai network to world uh, there is nothing called community you only you are only an individual okay you think only about yourself and your uh, feelings your uh, desire and uh, that is the reason why the indian communities are still better you know we have the social network we have a joint family system uh, at least in a larger extent we live as a society we have culture we have the festivals so we uh, move together and that is again uh, uh, the way in which we are different at the same time when you look at the people in the west many of them live with a, you know antidepressant tablet every day because they they are stressed out because they are stressed out because of work they are stressed out because of personal relationship and the things like that okay so the uh, these are the scenarios uh, uh, in, in the future and uh, that is the reason why uh, in another book uh, by you know, uh, harari uh, called homo deus uh, he says that a uh, uh, possibility of a replacement of human beings with a superman uh, which he called the homo deus or the human god i end up with uh, all these kind of abilities of eternal life okay which of course could uh, be possible when the technology grow now i am coming to the next part of uh, my lecture we have seen the human migration the start the day which in which we started uh, doing agriculture we started destroying the planet and then and started uh, destroying the, the the earth and then slowly what is the scenario now 
this is the latest uh, uh, report by WWF. This is called Living Planet Index, which gives you an idea about what is the health of the uh, planet in terms of indexes uh, scientifically assessed and calculated. And if you look at uh, the whole scenario, we started discussing about the origin of the earth and the origin of human species, but you will see 60 percentage of the fall in wildlife populations happen in the last 40 years. That means whatever change we are seeing now, whatever decline in the species in the planet which we are seeing now happen in the last 40 years time. And that, and all these things in a rampant, in a rampant pace happen in last four decades. And uh, what are the driving forces? You can uh, enlist a number of uh, reasons, but the primary reason is over-exploitation. We are exploiting more than the carrying capacity or regenerating capacity of the planet. And second is agriculture. And remember, it was not in the earlier reports, the, the current reports reiterate the fact that agriculture is one of the major reasons which has driven many of the species to extinction. That means not just the agriculture process, but the way in which we uh, use fertilizer, the way in which we use uh, the chemicals in the system, all these things contribute to the decline of species. Okay. And uh, there are a large number of drivers and pressures, threats uh, to biodiversity. I'm not discussing everything, uh, 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 there's no time for that. But remember, what are the major reasons? If you look at the whole history of human beings, there, are very, there is an interesting statement by Maxwell. He says that guns, nets, and bulldozers. Guns, nets, and bulldozers. And throughout the human history, these remained as the main uh, enemies of uh, the other species in the planet. Okay, guns, we use for uh, destroying the animals, over-exploitation of the species, massive killing, etc. Nets, we use it for, uh, especially in the aquatic ecosystem motions, to remove uh, the populations. And bulldozers, as you can see now, the, the bulldozers, look at uh, something is happening in Kerala or Uttaranjal, wherever. You see the hills disappearing in a single day, and then uh, new landscapes are coming up. So, these are the reasons. And if you look at the drivers one by one, you can see that one reason for the disappearance of species, why we put the ecosystem in danger is consumption. And we are consuming as, hum as a species, which share the planet with uh, uh, others, other millions of species, we are consuming more. We are consuming more than what we require. Not we, but no, the human population as a whole. And second is that we are actually producing lot of uh, things and these production systems will create a lot of waste which is ultimately uh, pumped into the systems and now what you wanted to eat is not decided by you but by the market for example a normal indian uh, has uh, their own uh, very good uh, healthy uh, menu but again what we have, what we get in the market is again decided by the market and we uh, we are forced to leave with that and the financing mechanisms and uh, the, the, the changes in the, in, in the governance patterns. All these things are, uh, again, uh, the driving forces which put the systems in a lot of danger. As a result, if you ask me what are the five major issues in the world now, environmental issues, it starts with the first thing, and that is the habitat and uh, habitat loss and degradation. And second is over-exploitation uh, is the second uh, major threat. And the third reason now, which is not the case uh, 50 years back, it is the climate change. Again, our own creation. And the fourth one is pollution. And the fifth one is actually the invasive alien species, which means we are actually transporting the species across the world. And in an unfavorable situation, they may pose a lot of danger uh, for us. These are the issues. So if you ask me the five issues, these are the issues. Habitat destruction, over-exploitation, climate change, pollution, and invasive alien species. And uh, I'll tell you only, only one example with regard to over-exploitation. This is a species called a passenger pigeon. Passenger pigeon was one of the largest populations of birds in North America. And that was actually the time when the human beings uh, uh, discovered the double barrel gun. And there are, as, as you see in the, in, in, the, in, in, in the painting here, and when these animals fly, when these birds fly, there will be total darkness for five minutes in earth. Because each stock, each flock, may carry around uh, two to uh, four million of millions of birds. And now in the last, after that, 
50 years of time, the human beings wiped out the entire population of uh, passenger pigeons. And the last one remained, the Martha, which also died in 1940s in the Cincinnati Zoo in France. So this is a way in which the human beings, the animals which were there in millions, they were actually totally eliminated from the surface of the earth in uh, 50 years of time. And the latest uh, interpanel, intergovernmental panel on uh, the uh, biodiversity and ecosystem services, which published its report in 2019 May, uh, makes it very clear that all, you know the entire three quarter of the land-based environment and 66 percentage of the marine environment are totally altered by human actions. And uh, one million species are threatened with extinction all over the world. And also another thing which you have to remember is that all over the world, pollinators, pollinators are the, the small insects uh, and other animals which actually help in pollination. And that ensure the food security in the world. Pollinators are disappearing very fast on the planet because of our own use of uh, pesticides and other chemicals. Now we think about uh, COVID-19 as a greatest threat. And there are debates whether the, the coronavirus or the COVID-19 virus, it, start, it, is start, it is a genetically modified one in the Chinese lab or it is a natural one. But now we have technology. There's nothing to actually discuss at all. You know, even our ministers and the, the, the American uh, president also discuss about the possible origin of uh, the coronavirus. And now we have genetic uh, mechanisms and the genetic sequencing methods which can align all the uh, nucleotides and, and nitrogenous bases. And it tells all the story. And all the people across the world, they have studied, they have done the DNA sequencing. And all the sequencing make it very clear that this is, is not a genetically modified or a laboratory created uh, virus. But it is actually a na natural virus. See, the natural virus normally are contained in nature. But how does that come out from the system? And again, one of the reasons why we are doing it, as you can see in the photographs there, are that our feeding habit starts changing. So many of the animals, uh, we have a selective feeding habit in the earlier uh, part of our evolutionary history. But our culinary habits started changing. Our gastronomic uh, uh, you know, requirements started changing as we evolved uh, as a so-called modern man. And then we started using many animals which we once considered as wild. That is one reason. Okay, that means wild animals are used as human food and they are marketed in open spaces. So these viruses, which usually remain associated with these wild animals, they easily now get transmitted to human beings. That is one reason. Second reason, these animals are exposed to human beings primarily because we destroy their environment. For example, there are, uh, you know, there are unsent uh, not totally confirmed reports which says uh, the origin of corona, the COVID-19, as bats or sometimes an anteater. Okay. You know, all these animals were not at all used once by the human beings, but they appear in the wet markets of China. And normally that is the reason. But we now think about corona and tomorrow it may be some other corona forms because these, these viruses in the, no, in, in the new environment, they undergo mutation and they develop into new uh, uh, forms. And then it's very difficult to contain. They are even more dangerous than genetically manipulated uh, you know, pathogens. No, very interestingly, UNEP, United Nations Environment Program in 2016, they reported that uh, 335 diseases that emerged between 1960 and 2004, among that, 60% of them come from animals. And majority of them reach human beings because of the increase in the meat trade. And uh, he, uh, these animals are now exposed to human beings because the environment is totally distracted. For example, bats. Bats actually, they take shelter in large trees uh, in, in, in the forested areas or in the buffer zones. But we are destroying the larger trees in the forested areas and then uh, they are coming more towards the uh, uh, human settlements. And this is happening across the world. So uh, if you consider the zoonotic diseases, that means the diseases which are transmitted from the uh, animals to human beings, they are on the increase. So corona may not be a, a single case. We have hundreds of other diseases, other pathogens, which are sometimes more potentially damaging uh, than corona. And this is uh, the scenario now. So environment has environmental changes, destruction of environment, climate change has uh, a real contribution 
to increase in these diseases. For example, look at the, what is happening in across the world. The Chinese market, the wet markets, where they sell uh, these animals uh, right from uh, the, the mouse, the, the scaly anteater, bats, everything. Everything uh, which is living, uh, you find in the, in the market. So it's very easy that in, in the last, uh, it can be transmitted to human beings. And you look at the crowd there. The human population is so high in these markets that the transmission will become very, very easy. So in a globalized world where the people travel across the world in a, in a very, very short span of time, spread of diseases, a chance of a species, a, a local species to become a pandemic is always possible. So this is, these are the issues. So these uh, basic issues we need to uh, address uh, when we discuss about the control of the uh, pathogen in a longer period of time. So uh, this, this is an interesting uh, poster which appeared in China after the coronavirus outbreak, which says that uh, they are uh, our friends, not food. Okay, so that means they use every animal uh, as a food material. And our, our actually the, the feeding culture, our gastronomic culture should actually change when we look at the post COVID scenario. And also when you look at the way in which we understand the things, it's all different. For example, if you look at the youngsters in, in, the, in our whole planet, you'll see that majority of them use cola drinks. Not only Coca-Cola, but the, car, the, the carbonated soft drinks. They all carry carbon and a lot of sugar. Okay. And then the companies, with the help of all the, uh, you know, the celebrities, the ambassadors, they sell, sell the products. And then who is going to be benefited? Nobody. Because whoever drinks it, they get only the, uh, the bad impact in their health. And more uh, overweight because of sugar and the diabetes because of sugar and addiction because of the cocaine content in, in uh, these uh, things. For example, you look at the content, you know, if you can, there are a large number of studies, including scientific studies, which appear in Lancet, which clearly indicate that there are in Coca-Cola 24 chemicals. And many of these chemicals are potentially uh, carcinogenic and uh, uh, yet you know there is no issue uh, with the uh, selling of these products and uh, because these are the fa fake stories which is created by the business uh, which actually uh, run uh, the world and then you look at the other uh, food commodities how, how the change in our food uh, consumption pattern will ultimately pressurize the uh, you know the farmers as well as uh, our own uh, health is a, a typical example and now we discuss about, you know, if you look at the companies which actually sell all these food products and drinks, you'll understand that there are only a few number of companies who manage the business across the world, who actually make the people to think alike and the, uh, the, the monoculture, which I mentioned earlier. So we, all, we are all forced to think alike. We are all forced to think that, you know, this is uh, the best product available for your uh, health and uh, consumption. And then you look at the way in which the things are happening uh, in uh, different parts of the world. For example, uh, you uh, take the case of uh, the uh, Lace, a company. This is again owned by PepsiCo. And uh, they sued uh, the farmers in Gujarat, saying that a particular variety of uh, the potato, which is relatively long, uh, which is, is uh, you know, make ideal chips for them, uh, that should not be farmed by uh, the farmers, claiming that this is a variety of, with which, where they have the royalty. This is one part of the story. Now they have withdrawn the case because uh, again, many people, uh, the farmers uh, went to the court and then for one kilogram of, uh, 50 kilogram of uh, uh, potato, a Gujarati farmer, he get 20 rupees. For 52 gram of the, the, the chips, the company uh, get 20 rupees. That means between the farmer and the company, there is 10,000 percentage gap in price. So that means you are, if a farmer is selling the product to the, the company, the farmer is not going to be benefited. Uh, the, only the company is going to be benefited. So this is a way in which the trade is happening uh, in, in the country. And that is also a thing. Then you look at, the other larger food which is sold across the world and uh, for example the all the all the uh, modern uh, junk food the so called fast food okay i uh, start from the burger the pizza etc and you know this is high calorie food 
and high calorie food not only create a lot of health issues in you but also uh, create a lot of issues when we uh, to sustain our uh, health in a longer period of time lot of uh, illness are connected with that particularly hypertension diabetes and heart ailments and uh, the the why human beings are actually more addicted towards the modern food because there is something in our dna okay because uh, right from the uh, way uh, the human beings originated and they migrated we started loving uh, different kinds of modern food and uh, started we started eating uh, you know the the cooked meat and then we started eating other processed food because this is their their now dna or oh, this kind of uh, an addiction is actually uh, made use by all these companies uh, in selling their products okay and uh, they also create other social issues i am not going into that for example throughout the world wherever coca cola plants have been uh, installed it they created a lot of water stress and also the burger companies uh, they are buying all the grains and which is supposed to be uh, eaten by the some of the poor people in the africa all of the grains uh, are actually purchased by the companies uh, which uh, make cattle feed in the west and uh, because the, the beef uh, is uh, meat is one of the major ingredient in in the burger anyway so the, all these things are happening so there means a lot of uh, uh, market pressure is coming into the bee and also you can see that uh, the whole trade of seed as well as uh, the chemicals are owned by a few companies they change their names they merge each other and then they monopolize the whole thing that means we have no freedom to use our own uh, chemicals and we uh, are actually forced to buy the seeds and uh, uh, the chemicals from a limited number of companies this is also happening and also in in future the patents which is related with agriculture these are also now owned by uh, many of the private companies because in future in the very near future they are going to actually monopolize the market and the, where the again our farmers will do, lose uh, again the chance to do the uh, farming according to their wish now this is a slogan this is a slogan for human survival not a political slogan because uh, you know the we anticipate better world better tomorrow this is a driving force that keep the public uh, optimistic okay so you can uh, live on that and then you have to have a reality understanding of the reality then think about india in india we have 17.5 percent of the global population so whatever stress that you see in the environment is primarily created by uh, these forces uh, and uh, the demand by the human beings and you can see that you know the uh, we have uh, one person new one more in every second born in the country that means one more mouth to feed and this is a reality and when you think about development for the future you should understand that the united nations uh, sustainable development goals they forward 17 uh, goals as united nations sustainable development goals i am not discussing each and everything but you remember the first goal is no poverty and second goal is hunger so in both these cases you will understand uh, that if you really wanted to see development happening you should give the people sufficient balanced food and there should not be no, no poverty okay and also uh, there should be uh, much resources there should be equitable distribution of things that will be uh, peace and justice and there will be uh, more and more uh, gender equality all the things are coming in when we think about development okay so when we think about development okay sorry for the is a small delay in there uh you should understand that what actually is happening when we think about development as far as india is concerned so should understand that the india which we see in one side this is a, a photograph from uh, mumbai on one side you will see the 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 posh uh, villas on the other side you will see the largest slum in the world so what is actually uh, really happening to bridge the gap between the rich and poor in the country and how we are going to address these issues are very very important okay and when you uh, think about the, the the distribution of wealth 
in the country again there is a lot of uh, difference in the accumulation of uh, wealth in the country and also if you look at the human hunger index in uh, of 2019 uh, places india 100 and second among the 117 qualifying countries that means a serious issue to address in india is actually poverty and also uh, the uh, the income for the common man and uh, this is a uh, latest uh, report uh, which just one percentage of indians now own 50 almost 58 percentage of the wealth uh, that means more than half of the wealth in india is actually occupied by one percentage of indian population at the same time we have to address very very serious issue and one of the serious issue when we think about sustainable development is alleviating poverty. And second is uh, ending hunger and decent work and economic growth, reducing inequality, preserving life on land, upholding peace, justice and uh, strong institutions. So all these things happen in this background. This we should understand. And then the, in the, in the post-COVID world, we realize that we live in a neoliberal world where the, everything is controlled by a set of uh, uh, private entrepreneurs and uh, they decide on the future of the uh, trade they decide upon uh, you know the, how to control even the government regulations and the political uh, success and economic ultimately uh, this will uh, lead to a, a, a kind of uh, economic catastrophe and that is happening in a neoliberalized world where everything is controlled by a, a group of people particularly uh, there is a stronger orientation towards economic growth uh, by the private sector so neoliberalism also nurtures inequality because we have tried in the last 30 years the whole world is actually behind uh, you know open markets and neoliberalistic policies and we now uh, understand that wealthiest 62 uh, people on earth own uh, as much wealth as bottom half 3.5 billion and the top one percentage are more wealthy than the remaining 99 percentage. So there's growing inequality, which is happening as a result of this kind of economic uh, uh, neoliberalism uh, that is happening across the world. Okay. So there are large number of issues, social and economic issues uh, to address. So uh, what we have to do in the post uh, uh, COVID scenario is to look at the people. So if you look at the, you know, what is happening in India after the lockdown, you will see that the Severely hit people are the people who are actually uh, earning uh, daily income uh, through agriculture, through other uh, other labor, etc. And their uh, uh, you know their uh, economic uh, freedom is again a big question. So when we think about uh, you know the development for the future, economic uh, liberalization future, we have to prioritize these people who are at the bottom of uh, the the economy and now. So. We have to think different. In the post-COVID era, we have to think different. What is actually the priority for the uh, government? Is it the conservation of the natural resources that we have, or is it our policy uh, to, uh, you know, the import all the uh, or uh, invite all the companies to make the products for Indians? Who is going to buy it? You know. Uh, who is going to buy it? If the India is uh, going to become the hub for motor companies, for example, and who is going to buy it? At the same time, there are people actually living in extreme poverty. So these are the things which we need to uh, realize when we think about uh, you know, the future of the India in the post-COVID world. So we have to reorient our views about nature more deeply and more specifically issues related with the climate change because this is again a major thing we have to address. So our priorities should actually change. Our priority should live as small communities which are self-sufficient and our panchayats, our villages should be giving, uh, should be uh, self-sufficient in resources rather than you know uh, importing materials uh, from outside so this is the concept of uh, the antyodhya by mahatma gandhi we need to have more and more uh, orientation towards that uh, investing heavily we need to invest heavily on certain sectors especially public services education to create more skilled people and also to ha uh, uh, produce happy citizens you know producing citizen is not an issue but producing happy citizen is very very important because we all have a short lifespan and remaining happy in the world is more important uh, than anything else and also we have to uh, uh, identify the uh, the gap areas uh, and do uh, research for example we have to produce our own uh, materials when we need uh, uh, to address many of the health care issues 
so we need to be helped uh, uh, more and more equipped when we think about the future of the world because future of the world is not going to be the same uh, as as in the past because our priorities should actually change and then our uh, romance with the market society and uh, you know trade society should also end that may, may continue but you know that is not the ultimate which uh, we have to uh, uh, understand and we have to actually help uh, uh, rediscover uh, the thing uh, our priorities uh, for a uh, future as well okay and uh, we in, in the post covid world there is going to be uh, a, a supremacy for science and education and social services we need to uh, reinvent our uh, way in which we look at uh, economy there should be circular economy where there will be lesser amount of waste and there there will be a balance between the consumption and as well as production and circular economy is something which we need to uh, think uh, for future also and also uh, the civil society uh, and market and uh, the uh, uh, the human society all the things uh, should be linked in our thinking and philosophy okay and we also have to think about the more and more state socialism coming in where uh, the, there will be more mutual aid people should live as small community sharing the resources among uh, themselves and then uh, in a in a more and more satisfied way so there is a lot of way in which we can transform uh, and address the whole issue of uh, the development including alleviating poverty with a stronger uh, nature base because nature is going to be the major uh, source for making the people live and making the people uh, understand uh, the realities if you look at the human health again uh, nature can play a very very important role and the clean uh, water and sanitation clean uh, and uh, 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 clean energy and decent work and economic growth and all the things if you uh, realize uh, then uh, the nature and natural resources play a very very important role and we have to think about alternative future alternative future is something which is not market control but understanding the realities and the requirement of the world and you also should, each human being also should understand what is the purpose of their life and how to live in a, a healthy uh, life and their education should change education uh, requirement should change because we need to bring in more and more sustainable uh, uh, solutions because we need to produce more skilled students than the people with uh, simply uh, degrees and there should be our motto should be education for all health for all and food for all and this should be and we should actually uh, as uh, as teaching community research community and uh, the, the learning should become interdisciplinary as you can see i am discussing about environment environment is not a single entity we need actually the uh, multiple thinking pluralistic thinking when we think about the future of the uh, and and also as students because they are uh, how do they get job when they complete a basic uh, science degree or any other degree and then they should be emotionally strong so the education scenario should have more emphasis on emotional intelligence also they should be motivated they should be self contained and they should be social skills so that they will uh, become uh, self sufficient in 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 the in the future world in the post covid world and also uh, you can think about uh, any way in which uh, all the ways which makes you emotionally intelligent uh, than you know the uh, simply i uh, intelligent so you should be emotionally strong because in the modern world you have to face more and more catastrophes because the environment is not the same human population is increasing we have lesser amount of agricultural land and there will not will not be clean water and air and these are all things going to be worse in the in the years to come so you should be uh, emotionally uh, much more competent and the the youngsters should be they improve the decision making they reduce uh, all, all these kind of social pressure they may have to handle uh, for that they have uh, uh, to find out their own way of self discipline understanding themselves or more self realization should happen in in the future world and each society should be self reliant and society should interact not only the companies companies actually remain as a government business but the people should collaborate more and they should lead a self sufficient way so there will be uh, more and more uh, thinking about sustainable living and sustainable lifestyles because you know living happily is more important than living an extra wagon life uh, which destroy the planet and more more and more i uh, actually we have to experiment for example the kudumbashri experiment which makes the 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 woman economically self sufficient all the things should happen uh, in future and also uh, the uh, happiness we are, there are countries like bhutan 
where the growth, gross domestic happiness is less, the people are very happy. There are many factors which actually drive happiness, including uh, you know the way in which they live, uh, their consumption pattern, and also the political scenario, everything together. And another country which I am always proud of is actually the country which is uh, uh, top in the in, in in happiness index now, and that is Finland. And Finland, the people are uh, uh, very happy. There are so many reasons for that: social support healthy life expectancy, social freedom, generosity, and absence of corruptions. So all these things make people very happy. So we should actually think in that direction when the people become more and more happy uh, by uh, acquiring uh, this kind of a physical uh, settings. This is very, very important. And also the things, the way in which, you know, what the reasons which actually drive the people to happiness in Finland. And also a lot of women uh, leaders coming up. And if you look at the post-COVID scenario, there are few countries which actually manage the COVID scenario much better. And uh, many of them are ruled by the woman. So, there is, so slowly there is actually uh, a change in the leadership coming up for the people uh, who understand uh, the essentiality of uh, environment and also uh, living a happy life and a peaceful life. And they are becoming leaders. This is a good sign which is happening which should actually happen in India also. The people who actually think about the nature, because if you look at the Finland Prime Minister and the whole coalition team, they're all the Green Party members. Okay, And throughout the world, you know, many of the uh, women leaders, which is political leaders coming up, uh, they have a very strong orientation towards nature as well. So uh, we, in the future, nature has to play play a significant role. Science has to play a very, very significant role because it is time for nature. Okay. And uh, together we have to actually make uh, our own environment uh, a better place to live and also uh, a better place to survey for a longer period of time. You look at the, the future events coming up. If you look at the 2020 Environment Day message, it's again, the theme is time for nature. And 2020 year is actually International Year of Plant Health, where more emphasis is given to uh, the plant health. And if you look at 2021, 2030, this is the United Nations decade on ecosystem restoration. Because restoring ecosystem play a very, very important role, not only in making the environment clean, but also ensuring the livelihood opportunities for the larger number of people in the world. So this is uh, the time to think, understand that knowledge is power. Life is not just algorithms. And also uh, common sense, uh, science is common sense at its best. And also, this is a time to know yourself, to live sustainably and happily in a post-COVID world. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Attendees can now use the hand raise option to ask relevant questions. We will allow them to speak. Attendees can now use the hand raise option to ask relevant questions. We will allow them to speak. Uh, thank you, sir. It's a lively session and uh, gave a new perspective towards history, humanity, and our planet. I'm sure all of us will be able to uh, will be more sensible now in dealing with the environment in future. A link for submitting the feedback is sent to attendees. I request all the attendees to complete the form. Uh, now we can open the form for clearing the queries also. Uh, sorry, a few questions are asked by the participants, which you can see in the question and answer link at the end of the screen. Can you please check the same and answer the relevant questions? Yeah, there are two questions and one is by Dr. Vinita Pandey. Uh, is your view is uh, on artificial intelligence threat to human being or a blessing? Uh, well, uh, we cannot give a definite answer for that. This is a, again a question. This is a double-edged sword. For example, <clears throat> one thing is very sure. Artificial intelligence is uh, going to create a lot of uh, jobless people in the world. But there is an advantage. Whatever is the requirement for artificial intelligence, we have to tool our, uh, tune our education in that way. We have to actually develop our skills in that way so that you know, we'll be 
or the younger generation will be fit uh, to get a new job. So remaining skillful uh, in uh, the modern era is very, very important. In that way, the artificial intelligence is a blessing. Artificial intelligence definitely has all the positives. So for example, we are living in an artificial intelligent world and uh, everything is uh, controlled by the thing. But losing personal space is a very, very important thing which we have to address. You know, artificial intelligence actually make a, uh, not, nothing, uh, no information about uh, a particular person, a secret. Okay, if you really wanted to live a, you know, a private life, this is not possible uh, with the help of artificial intelligence, especially when you use technology. So this is a problem. So I cannot say it is actually a blessing or disguise, but you have, this is, the, again, uh, it depends upon our approach, the way in which we handle uh, the scenario. Uh, if it is uh, for betterment, definitely it is good. But there should be some kind of restrictions which uh, should be there. Especially the whole world in, in future, the whole economics is going to be driven by big data. In that way, the way in which the big data are uh, managed by the companies, especially for their personal uh, benefit, economic benefit, there should be some kind of restrictions uh, which uh, ultimately should happen. And this is my answer for that. Okay. And uh, next uh, question was by Jisha Nair, who said, uh, vital positive environmental changes are seen in India after the post-COVID-19 lockdown. How long uh, will this uh, impact last? It's a good question, but I cannot give you an answer for that, a well-defined answer for that. I'll tell you one example. Uh, we have, uh, when, uh, the, if you look at the, all the scientific data, it clear, tells you very clearly that all the environmental parameter, pollution has, uh, load has become very, very less, particularly in the most polluted uh, cities in the world like Delhi. At the same time, uh, how long it will last? You know, once the lockdown is over, the companies are going to produce more uh, in order to make up the economic loss. So the scenario may again come back. Okay. So this is, uh, but ultimately this should give us a lesson uh, to understand uh, that uh, some kind of regulation is inevitable to uh, make the people healthy as well as the environment healthy. There are some other issues which is beyond our control. For example, I, I am a marine uh, uh, biologist and I work with the marine system also. And I understand that this year we have in Orissa, uh, there are largest number of uh, sea turtles uh, uh, which came to breed. Okay, this is a record, but at the same time, uh, it takes almost 40, uh, 50 to 55 days for the eggs to hatch. But what happened is that because of sea level rise and other natural calamities, half of the eggs, which is laid on the beach, were washed away. So that means an a thing which is uh, with the advantage of the environment, as a result of certain other changes in the environment, it became a loss. Uh, so uh, these kind of things, we don't have a, a good answer, but anyway, uh, the change in the environment, the way in which the other animals, other than human beings, are very happy in, in the lockdown situation, is uh, an indication uh, to human beings uh, that you know you are sharing the planet uh, with others also. So it's your responsibility to see that uh, the other species are also happy because you are living in a in a world where you share the same space with others. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there anyone else to clarify any queries? We can use the raise hand option uh, available in your screen and Ajit sir will help you out. Then shall I have a word now? Sanu? Yes, yes ma'am. Sir, sir, shall I have a word now? Sir, it was an excellent presentation. And the, the facts you have revealed is very alarming. That is, uh, there are loss of life due to uh, very uh, disease-oriented li life loss rather than the calamities and other things. That was very, very alarming situation, alarming information, actually, I got. It was a very nice presentation, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. I thank the principal and uh, Dr. Jayasri and the whole team. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was actually a very lively one, and we got a different perspective regarding mankind also. And you mentioned about a video which you want to show. If you want, you can just show it now. Or can we move forward, sir? Pardon? You want to, you want to show us some video at the end, end of the presentation, right, sir? If you want, you can show it now. If you have time, I can. Uh, this will take only three, four, four minutes. You have time, sir. You have time.
sir is it playing no no sir, is it playing not... you are not seeing no sir it no, is sir, not no, playing sir. it is not playing sir oh one minute Sir, full screen. Sir, enlarge the screen, please, sir. Ah, okay. No, sir, it's not coming properly. Can sir, you see? No, no, sir. No, sir. We, no, sir. We, we can hear the sound, but actually the video is not playing, sir. One minute, one minute. We can hear the sound. Sir, start sharing with computer audio. Can you hear now? Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Ah, now it's okay. Sir, please increase full. the volume. Ah, volume is full. Okay, okay, sir. Sir, I think it's not opened with the computer volume. Sir, there is on the screen there is a more option. You can no, 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 no. see that. No, teacher, no. On the on the panel, on the top panel, there is a more option, and from that you can click. After that, after that, click the with the computer audio option. Yeah. No, sir. Audio is not here. After locating the file, on the left corner, you can see a button with the computer audio. Hello. If it is not clicked, we cannot hear the sound. Sir, the video is playing actually, but we are not getting any sound from the video. Video Hello? is playing. Can you see or hear? We can see the uh, video playing, but there is no sound, sir. Ah, now it is having sound.
So the message was clearly loud and clear, even though sound was not there. We clearly understood uh, from the video, I mean, what it was. But the VA talks itself a lot. Thank you for sharing this video, sir. Now, one more question came from the part. Can you see that one, sir? Yeah, there are two questions. So one is Preeta Anand again asked, uh, there uh, can be pollution due to residual disinfectants and microbial resistance to them. Sure, because this uh, whole lockdown period has seen increased use of plastics uh, because they use it in the in um, in the form of mask, in the form of uh, you know the the, the protective uh, dresses, etc. So definitely, this has uh, this is the other side of the story, and uh, we have used a lot of chemicals also in the form of disinfectants, all, and which ultimately will reach the system. Uh, so, uh, but this is unavoidable because uh, we are in such a kind of a alarming uh, scenario. So we need to have a more management strategies for that. Oh, definitely, that is a point. Another another question by Abhilash R. First of all, uh, let me congratulate you. Uh, excellent presentation. Will uh, the me melting of ice in the polar region pose a threat uh, for more serious microbial spread in future? Definitely, because you know uh, something which is known no not known to science is uh, the load of microbial biodiversity especially in the hidden depth of the ocean as well as in the polar ice caps. So once you uh, see the melting of the ice, many of these species may actually spread out, including the viral particles, which can even live as dead particles. And uh, that definitely will see some of the changes. But how long that will infect, infect human beings, we don't know. Uh, that is the unknown side of the science. Thank you, sir. Uh, anybody else wants to raise any query? You can raise, raise your hand or type, uh, raise your hand. I just will help you out. And sir, we can move forward. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, raising the queries also. Now I request all of all to view a small promo video of KSMDV College.
some technical issues showing the video it didn't come properly sorry for that sorry for inconvenience uh, now i request uh, dr radhika to deliver the vote of thanks thank you sanu sir uh, we are now at the concluding part of the third session of virtuosa 2020 webinar series organized by shastangota kumbhalat shangupilla memorial devasam board college we are definitely lucky to have eminent personalities as our resource persons and all of us have witnessed it today's session by dr biju kumar a professor and head of aquatic biology and fisheries university of kerala adds another further to it there was a well organized and graphically well represented with beautiful pictures that clearly told us the story of evolution of human the story of corona and why we need to care for the environment that's now onwards we are forced to live in a changed world a post corona world so on behalf of team virtuosa 2020 and all participants gathered here i extend a sincere thanks to you sir for such a wonderful presentation thank you sir thank you it was a pleasure thank you uh, even though our principal anil sir has forwarded us from formally thanking him each time we cannot go without extending uh, his uh, gratitude our gratitude and love towards him as he is the master brain and energy source thank you so much sir for being with us sir ratha for being on among us thank you sir Uh, the virtuosa team expresses our sincere gratitude to professor shankar narayanan sir department of english for his blessings and presence thank you sir and finally the participants are the soul for such a uh, webinar series and as already stated we are lucky to have a wonderful group of enthusiastic participants and thank you all for being here and please do continue uh, being throughout the series and thank you all thank you thank you madam Now I request uh, Dr. J. S. R. I. Q. C. Coordinator to tell us a few words and inform the attendees about tomorrow's schedule. Okay, thank you, Sanu. First of all, I would like to congratulate Biju Kumar sir for a nice presentation. As I already said earlier, it was a really informative session. And uh, tomorrow we have a session. Um, our session will start at 2 p.m. itself. Sorry for the delay uh, caused today. so definitely we will go on time tomorrow so uh, tomorrow we have dr satish from future studies to deliver the talk for us it is uh, it is about the uh, outcome based restructuring of syllabus how how we can uh, restructure our syllabus in terms of the outcome based assessment that was the, that will be the uh, topic for tomorrow be here on time thank you thank you all for watching the uh, entire uh, presentation thank you all thank you madam now we are coming to the end of third day session of session from the bottom of my heart i wish to thank you all for being part of the session the session will end now thank you Renu, could you please share that video to me? Let me try.
Ajesh, please share the screen.